Welcome to day 468 of our DSO journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother Brian. And remember these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in DSOFI. I'm back home today, Brian. Feels good to be home. Welcome back. Finally. I know. It feels good to be back in the normal show atmosphere rather than out in traffic and with leaf blowers all around me. So it's good to be back. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, so I just want to quickly jump on to some news from the general crypto space. Jim Cramer from CNBC, he made a tweet yesterday afternoon saying, time for crypto, exclamation point, exclamation point. Uh, he's really been all over the place on CNBC regarding Bitcoin and crypto in general. Uh, he's very bipolar, I think. Uh, he does think that $20,000 will act as a floor for now, it appears. Uh, but just the other day, he, when Bitcoin was like at, I don't know, like $19,400 or so, he was really negative. And he, and he said, I'll quote, crypto really does seem to be imploding, went from $3 trillion to $1 trillion. Why should it stop at $1 trillion? There's no real value there. I'm guessing that he's just trying to kind of cover both sides of the thing. Yeah. If Bitcoin drops to 10,000, he's going to be like, yeah, see what I said? And then if Bitcoin stays over 20 and heads towards 40, he can say, see, I was right. Um, I, yeah. I don't know. With that said, I think that $20,000, it could act as a floor heading forward as long as the U.S. markets uh, don't dive again. And, and I, I think that the U.S. markets are – are getting a little bit more steady. Uh, and by that, I mean that oil prices have plunged. Uh, we've seen oil prices drop about 20%. And oil is a really big uh, instigator of inflation. And to see it drop that much might kind of allow the market to consider the fact that interest rates might not have to rise as much to, to stable up inflation. I don't know. We'll see. I think the next several several weeks are going to be important. Will twenty thousand be a floor? I don't know. Yeah, it, I mean, it's hard to say. I I know you you said Jim Cramer is very bipolar. Brian didn't mean that from a medical health standpoint. He meant it from like his. He takes both both extremes on the Bitcoin angle, and I I agree. I think he's doing it because he wants to kind of have all the bases covered. He also, I think he tweeted the other night, crypto night in America when it jumped back over $20,000. I think we're, at, we're far from being out of the woods right now. Uh, like Brian said, I think inflation plays a huge role. Also, if you look at the charts and if you do technical analysis of charts, just looking at the downtrend, we're basically at the upper end of the downtrend right now. Uh, if you look at the weekly chart or if you zoom out on the daily chart, I think we need another couple weeks above $20,000 in order to f say that there's a good chance we're at a bottom. Otherwise, there's the, still a really solid chance that we could just continue along that down, downtrend and, I don't know, hit lo new lows over the last, you know, year or I guess, I don't I, I guess it's been like, what, a year and a half since we've had lows lower than this. I don't know. I'm hoping that 20000 is a floor and, the, you know, it, it it dropped below that, of course. I think it hit like 17000 but it ended up bouncing back, especially on the weekly chart, if you look at the candles there. So so I, I think we're, like I said, far from out of the woods, but we are seeing some good signs. If we can see inflation curtailed, and like the, I'm guessing some numbers are going to be coming out sometime in the next week or two that are going to indicate whether inflation's peaked or whether it's going down, I think... We should keep an eye on that. Uh, we expect Fed to raise interest rates, but I think that's already all factored into all of this. So we just got to wait and see. Hopefully, inflation's not still going up. Otherwise, that could definitely spell some very bad things for Bitcoin and, and all markets pretty much in general. Yeah. Uh, so moving on to DSO, uh, Invest in Digital, he made a post about their marketing strategy and how they're going to push DSO forward. Uh, in the long long term and he also made a long form post about this on zirkles uh the plan was called the make the make it so easy plan and they basically want to build an easy low friction framework for founders uh, as well as developers to build as many DSO apps as possible and the strategy is really threefold and they they outlined the strategy and they gave they gave examples of how they're going to make this strategy happen 
Uh, so the first, the first plan is to make it easy and compelling for founders and developers to want to build these apps. Uh, and they're going to do this by creating hackathons with bounties. Uh, they're going to this program that they're going to create for hackathons and for this bounty bounty giving out uh, will DSO can support it and invest in teams, uh, but they, they will invest in the team's DAOs uh, and make it easy for founders and developers to learn how to build DSO apps. So they want to give money, but they want to do it through DAOs and they, they want to teach the community how to build on DSO in an easy way. So that's the start. Now, they also, they also wanted to, uh, they also wanted to um, actually the notes that you have here are not correct. So th they also want to make it easy for founders your, your and developers. Notes. You gave me your notes. I don't know. You must have left some out. They also want to make it easy for founders and developers to learn how to build DSO apps. And they're going to do this by creating a deep developer hub with a clear funnel and, and improved developer documentation. They're, they're also going to strive to be like the Solana developer hub. So if you know what Solana, the Solana developer hub, hub is like, that's what they want to kind of model themselves after. Uh, they're also, they want to hire somebody in addition to Ty uh, to do this. They're, they think it's a two person job to kind of build out this hub uh, and improve the documentation. Uh, and finally, they want to make it easy for founders and developers to acquire users for the DSO apps that they're creating. I mean, I mean, if you create an app on DSO and you build it, you want to be able to have people come on from the DSO community without a ton of a ton of marketing yourself. And to do this, they want to improve all of the DSO foundation marketing channels uh, so the founders and developers can leverage uh, their marketing channels and reach uh, to increase new eyeballs to their apps. And to do this, they're going to try and continue to build up their social followings on Twitter, on Discord, on Instagram, on all the social channels, and then allow for developer building to quickly be able to utilize those channels to market themselves to the community. So that that's really great. I, I think this is a good plan. It's a solid plan. They put a lot of thought into it. I think there's several other things that obviously need to happen. Uh, just on the front of creator coins on just, just bringing people here rather. I don't think you can just concentrate on bringing developers here. You need to also bring people here, which I'm sure they have plans. This is just kind of the plan to market towards developers and bring developers on. But uh, I'd be interested to see how they plan to bring other just regular creators on as well. Yeah. I mean, it was advertised as the marketing plan though. It wasn't just a developer marketing plan. So I don't know if this is like their, plan for now is just to reach out to developers and they're going to, you know, focus more on bringing users on later. I don't know. I kind of wish that we kind of see both going at the same time. Uh, I don't know what I feel, how I feel about investing in programs DAOs or new developers DAOs. You're kind of forcing them into creating a DAO and maybe, maybe that could be a turnoff to some people, I think. Uh, you know, we recently saw this whole Supernovas thing and Maybe if Supernovas didn't start it down, maybe they would have been able to raise capital in other ways. So I don't know if I like the whole force. You must, you know, create a DAO in order to get funding. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see how it turns out. Yeah, you know, like like I, I'm kind of on the fence there as, as well. I think that even though like the Octane Fund spent a lot of money, I think they put out like ten or eleven million dollars, and many of the projects just folded. Uh, the majority and, and to call octane the octane fund a success and and the money they spend a success would would be <laughs> such a such an overstatement but i do think that developers are are used to being able to obtain funds via grants and not having to create DAOs and not having to turn to these communities that they don't really know to to raise funds so i i think it's it's kind of like a, I think they need a twofold approach where they can utilize the DAOs, but also give grants at least. I don't know if they need to give hundreds of thousands of dollars to projects, maybe give small amounts and then see how the development happens and then turn to larger amounts if, if those teams seem to be firing on all cylinders. 
Yeah, I, I mean, there's different ways of doing it. We'll see. If, we'll see. Maybe this works better than before. We'll wait and see. So, anyhow, moving on, Design Star, they said that they're running one last story giveaway before they launch Story and Beta. So, I assume Story's Beta launch is coming any day now, any week now. Uh, it seems like it's on the verge of having their beta launch, and I'm I'm super excited. I've been excited since since the story announcement came out that they're creating an app because I love what Design Star and Revolve are doing. Yeah, we, we need something exciting to kind of get people's attitudes more positive. I think after the Supernova's uh, story yesterday, a lot of people are down. They feel like Supernova's was a, one of the better apps out there, and to see them run out of funding is is kind of sad. Yeah, and we're still waiting for the Pearl launch. I, I mean, we haven't really heard too much from them. I think their last post was about a month ago showing a screenshot. I was hoping it would be launched by now. I thought it would be sometime this summer. Summer still, you know, still got a couple months left in summer. So hopefully we see more from Pearl in the coming weeks and months ahead as well. Yeah, absolutely. So Nanobots. I love Nanobots, Brian. It's created by Alex Toma, Diso OG. Uh, if you haven't checked out their animated NFTs yet, they're really amazing. They're like these 8-bit animated robots that <laughs> do some really cool things. But So they la just launched their custom bots. So if you buy a Nanobot custom bot, uh, you can do so on Diamond App, on NFTZ, uh, and any of the other nodes. Uh, you then can transfer it to the Nanobot's burn address account and you'll receive a custom bot NFT with your username on it. Uh, so far, 14 of these have sold. There, uh, they have 50 of them available, so that means there's 36 still available. Check them out. They're really cool. Alex Toma, Diso OG, who's amazing. Uh, the Nanobots, I think they're an underappreciated NFT project on Diso. Yeah, they're only like four bucks. So, I mean, how can you go wrong there, right? And Alex Toma, uh, we had an opportunity to hang out with him in LA a few months ago. And such a great guy, such a nice guy, uh, really talented. So uh, if you can help him out and, and buy one of these nanobots, it would be great. And D Social World had an update yesterday. Uh, they actually had it before our show yesterday, but I missed it. Uh, now your notifications for mentions, replies, and requests can, are split they're split up and you can also scroll through them much easier and you find like old notifications you're just going to scroll down you're going to see load more and it's going to you can continuously click load more to load all of them but they're split up so it's easier like if you just want to find uh let's say mentions you can just easily look at all the mention notifications and you can quickly find one that maybe you got three weeks ago and you wanted to find again because you kind of can get lost in your notification the search world's been doing a lot with filtering and stuff to make your notifications more easily found. I, I love what they're doing and, and it is easier. I, I actually tried this out. Uh, it's de definitely make, simplifies things a lot if you have a lot of notifications. So Diso made a Twitter post teasing MetaMask yet again. And it's really been interesting to see this kind of evolve. Uh, the first, they made two posts. One showed a screenshot that said select account to log in and showed Mossify's DSO account, then Mossify.eth, MetaMask account, and then Mossify.trad, which was his Google account. And then DSO account also made another post that showed one with a DSO wallet address, one with an ETH wallet address, and then one with, I think it was Ty, Ty Fisher's DC, or Google account. And it looks like it's coming together. It looks like you're gonna be able to sign up simply using your Ethereum address log in simply using your MetaMask. And I think this has so much potential to bring Ethereum people into the various DSO nodes. So now, you know, DSOFI, now NFTZ, now any of the apps out there can advertise to the Ethereum community and say, just sign up by connecting your MetaMask and you automatically get an account. Yeah, this is, I, I think this is one of the most underrated features that are coming out because it is going to make onboarding Ethereum users a lot easier. And for people like us who are running NFTZ and are going to integrate with other chains, I think this is big and it's going to help things along. And I I, I think that the the DSO NFT mark market is slow. Of course, recently it's been a little bit a little bit busier. But I think once you can bring Ethereum into the mix, I think that could change things. 
Yeah, and we saw supernovas do this a little bit with their um, Ethereum minting. But now that, you know, Ethereum users can come onto the platform and easily sign in, sign up, I think it's going to be a game changer. So moving on, Lix, their funding round for their NFT staking platform starts today at 1 p.m. Eastern time on DowDow. So definitely check that out. Uh, of course, this is created by Clay Oglesby, a DSO OG. I really want to see what happens with Lix. I think there's a lot of potential for NFT staking. You know, I want to see. I want to see more about like how this is going to work. Like, what are going to be the benefits of staking your NFTs? What are you going to get? What are the incentives for Lix to pay out these stakes? So, like, you know, say I have ten NFTs I want to stake on Lix. What is how is Lix benefiting by me staking my NFTs there, and what kind of rewards am I going to get for staking my NFTs there? I'd love to know more from Clay. I, I know Brian and I are supposed to have a meeting with him at some point to kind of discuss more about this. But I, I'd love to learn more. I love the idea of NFT staking. I think Lix has a ton of potential. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and Clay will be he's a BitCloud OG, Diso OG. Uh, he's been around for a while. He knows what he's doing. Great designer. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this as well. Yeah, he actually did some designs for NFTZ back in the day. So, amazing guy. So, Supernovas is holding a community Zoom call at 10 p.m. Helsinki time, which is 3 p.m. Eastern time today. So, those Supernovas DAO holders who want to learn what's going on, like get, you know, maybe provide some ideas to Supernovas, you can do so via this Zoom call at 3 p.m. Eastern time. I assume that either Franz or the Supernovas account will be posting the link at some time today. If they actually, they may have done so already. I, I think if you go to Supernovas or the Franz Arthur account, there's a link there. If not, I'm sure they'll be posting it later today. I'm going to try to try to attend because it's, I think it's really interesting to see what ends up taking place here. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, it's, it's a shame that what happened happened, but it's, it's great to see the Supernovas team still trying to push things forward, uh, still sticking with the DAO. Uh, and I, I don't think they're done. I think there's, it's just a new path that they're going to take. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the DAO kind of take over here. Yeah. So, there, so I want to get back to DAO DAO. And I want to talk about some of the top 10 DAOs that have raised funding on DAO DAO over the last week. We haven't really talked much about DAO DAO. We haven't really talked much about the DAOs being funded there. So I thought I'd start by just listing ten the top ten DAOs over the last seven days, and it's really measly the amount of money they've been able to bring in. Uh, Node Bits DAO, they're the number one DAO over the last seven days, and they've brought in six hundred and four dollars. You know, it's, it's that's so low compared to what I think the potential of DAO DAO is, and what a lot of people's expectations for DAO DAO is. Uh, they were followed by F'd Up Cats, then Yugi DAO. Yugi DAO is a pretty interesting one. It's kind of like Pokey DAO. Uh, Diso Ninja, Algo Capital, Cast 3, of course, the old Clout Cast, XR Metaverse RO, Wavepool X DAO, Web3 Simplified, and Verified Creators. So those are the ones that are raising the most money over the last week. Uh, I'm sure next week we'll see a completely new slate of them. Uh, it'll be nice to see these numbers raised, though. Yeah, I, I, I think everybody expected more from DAO DAO, at least at this stage. But remember, it's early. I remember that they're still trying to get all their ducks in a row. Uh, they haven't really promoted this much. And if you are creating a DAO, I think the best approach is just, just take it slow. Uh, if you're considering take, creating a DAO, then may, maybe you want to wait and just see, see how things pan out first. Uh, see what else is, happens before you do. Because once you create a DAO, remember that you can't just abandon it because if you abandon it, you're basically abandoning all the people that you, that believed in you. So just consider that. I think a lot of people get this great idea, get excited, create a DAO, and then it kind of, it flops. But what if you had 15 or 20 people who invested into you, unless you're going to refund them, you kind of owe them the respect and, and your time to try and make it work. So just yeah. consider that. Yeah. And I, I just have some breaking news from the social world. I just got a message from Ado. Uh, they just launched an animated banner contest. 
So they're going to be rewarding DSO to some of the amazing creators based on community voting. Whoever gets the most votes wins. Number one's going to get one DSO. Number two's going to get 0.67 DSO. Number three's going to get 0.33 DSO. So they're giving two DSO away. Uh, you're just going to, in order to vote, you're just going to drop the profile name of your favorite animated banner in the comments on their post. Uh, you can see that post above or below here. Um, and there's a video showing them. Uh, it's a YouTube video. And the animated banners that are currently out there right now who are in this competition who you can uh, diamond and vote on are Rohit Nishad, Suiglide, Dejan Dudes Dow, Dow, Holio, XR Metaverse RO, Seals Vault, Name Trade, Stamp Art, Haike, Haike NFT Creations, Glitchy Dow, Yuchi, Millhouse Van Hooten, G Marsh, Don Barnhard, Kitty 4D, Disrupted Preneur, MP3, Sir Guy, Lendow, Mr. Music, Longo, Toria Art, Waypool X Dow, Seals, Kevin Saad, DOZ, Haunted Knight, and Ha Ke. So definitely check that out. Vote on some of those animated banners and maybe add your animated banner to the social world. So let's quickly get to the top NFT bids over the last 24 hours, according to NFTZ. Uh, Tory Seller bid on the most NFTs, followed by Exus, Heathcliff, ZN Mead, Tiny Art, Vindictive TJ, Meta Philosopher. Once again, I think it's like probably like 25 days running now that they've made this list. Studio Richards, the BitClout Dog, and Mr. Person 177. Yeah, so keep up those bids. Uh, the NFT market's still hot on DSO. And the top diamond creators in the last 24 hours, according to Alton Base, these people received the most diamonds in the last day. Sean Slater was number one, followed by Michelle Lord, Krasenstein, us, The Devil, Clay Oglesby, William Laurent, Illuminati, Now and Then, Meta Philosopher, and Web3 Peep. So congrats to all of them. Keep it up. Yeah, and that's all the news we have for today. Uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Everybody have a great rest of your day. See you later.